Problem 11.9. The brakes of a car are applied, causing it to slow down at a rate of 3 meters per second squared, or 3 meters per second per second. Knowing that the car stops in 100 meters, determine how fast the car was traveling immediately before the brakes were applied, and the time required for the car to stop. So we have a drawing of the car here, and initially has some v naught velocity that we don't know. And we know that our final velocity is V equals zero because the car comes to a full stop. It takes 100 meters to do so. Um, we also know there's an acceleration, right? It's pushing backwards, or not pushing backwards, but on the opposite direction of the uh, velocity. And we know that acceleration is 3 meters per second squared. So we know that whatever this... If we choose, we can choose uh, the right-hand right hand ve uh, vectors to be positive, and if we do so, then our acceleration will be negative, right? Or we can, it's a, really our choice, we can actually choose the vectors pointing to the left to be negative, which would make our right-hand side positive. But regardless of what we choose, what we need to understand is that the velocity vector, this guy here, velocity vector, and the acceleration vector are opposite to each other, right? So whatever the the sign that I choose for one has to be the other sign for the other one, right? Because they're one is uh, going for, to one direction, the other one to the opposite direction. All right, brilliant. So how can we solve this? There's two ways to solving this. The first way is if you like to memorize equations, and then you know that we don't have anything for time, we don't have any value for time on this problem, so we can use Torricelli's equation, right? And Torricelli's equation tells us that v squared minus v not squared equals two times the acceleration times the distance. Now, you're welcome to use this, but I think it's best when you're doing dynamics to actually use the fundamentals at least several times until you got a very good hang of them. And then with those fundamentals, you can solve any questions. But let's just do it for now with the equation, which is going to work perfectly fine here. So our final velocity, our V, this guy here is uh, nil, right? So this guy here is zero because it comes to full stop. Stop. Um, what else? This initial one we don't know. This is our unknown we're trying to solve. This is two is a constant. Then the acceleration we know it's going to be uh, th minus three, right? Minus three meters per second squared. And the distance that this happens is over a hundred meters. So we can apply just this, and we can solve the question for. So I just have two there, four there. So that means that this equals two times minus. Um, not, sorry, 2 times minus 3 times 100, right? And then that means that v naught. know that we have negative, negative. So that means that v naught equals the square root of 600, which equals about 24.5. Now, unit-wise, let's just check what we're doing. We are taking the square root of the acceleration, which was meters per second squared, and we're timing that by 100 meters, right? So we have the square root of meters squared second squared, so that means that our answer, our output is in meters per second. So 24.5 meters per second is the answer of how fast this car was going before, immediately before we apply the brakes. All right, so if you'd like to memorize formulas, that was that's what you would use. But Let's actually do it from the fundamentals so that we can do this every single time without having to memorize any formulas. All we need to remember are the fundamentals. What is velocity? Well, velocity is just a rate at which the position is changing with time, right? What about acceleration? Well, acceleration is just a rate of w at which velocity is changing with time. Okay? And we can combine these two equations, all right? We can know that um, if I solve this for dt, all right, the top one for dt, I'm going to get dx, x over v, and if I solve this one, let's put some arrows, so I solve this one for dt, I'm going to have dv divided by area, uh, acceleration, sorry. So we can make the, these two guys equal because we have dt, both are dt, so that means that dx over v equals dv over a, and therefore I can actually solve for a dx and v dv. Okay. And once we're at this point, note that we got rid of time by actually making these two guys equal. So we got rid of the time factor there. And now all we need to do is integrate, right? So we can integrate this equation beautifully from 
So for dx, we're going to be integrating from when it starts, position, original position to final position. And for dv, we're going to be integrating from the original velocity to the final velocity that we know is zero. Now, this is a particular situation that is very simple because our acceleration is uniform. It does not change with the position, right, or with time for that matter. It's always three. So it, can, it comes out of the integral as a constant. Okay, so, and note that if the situation was different, then we, we could use the same fundamentals. We just have to integrate the acceleration. That's all. And so what is the result of this integral here? Well, it's going to be A times the difference in, in positioning equals uh, v squared minus v squared, and these guys divided by 2, right? And that, if you know, it's exactly the equation of Torricelli that we just started using in the beginning, because we know that this guy here is negative 3, we know this guy here is 0, we know that this guy here is 100, the distance that it takes to break, to stop, right? So we end up with the same thing we had before, minus 3 times 100, equals minus v naught squared over 2 and therefore v naught equals square root of 600 which is approximately 24.5 meters per second okay so we get exactly the same answer All right so that is the first part there and our second part is asking what is the time required for the car to stop? And note, then again, we have two options, right? We can memorize the equation. We can know, okay, if it's a, um, if it's a constant, let's do B in blue. <clears throat> um, if it's a constant rate of uh, acceleration, then it's just going to be delta V divided by T. And we can solve for T. I can memorize that equation. That's fine. But we can also use the fundamentals, right? And note that on our fundamentals here, this thing here, we actually have an, an equation that is relating acceleration, velocity, and time. And all we have to do is use that because we know that acceleration is how let's do back. You know how acceleration is how the velocity is changing in respect to time, right? So make sure we get this out of the way. And what we're looking for is the time, so we have to do this and this, and we're going to integrate from our initial time when we first apply the brakes to our final time, whatever that is, that's the unknown. And on the right hand side, we're going to v naught and v. And now we have v naught, so that makes our lives easier, right? Once again, note that the acceleration can leave as a constant, the integral, which is very convenient. So we're going to have a t minus 0 equals v minus v naught. So that means that t equals v minus v naught divided by the acceleration, right? And note that this is exactly what we would have, would have got if we went this way here with memorization. We get delta v a equals v minus v naught divided by a. Okay, so we end up with the same thing, obviously, but on one way, you don't have to memorize anything. It's all, all, all using the fundamentals of what velocity is, acceleration is, and you can use this Whichever situation you have, you can always use this. Whereas on this one, it can only apply when you have a constant uh, uniform acceleration. All right, so let's just solve this for now. So the time required to go from, what was the original velocity? I forget. Oh, well, yeah, going to zero, right? So final velocity is zero, and the original one is 24.5. And we're dividing that by minus three which is the acceleration. And that gives us 8. 8 watt, well, we can always check, right? We are, we have meters per second on the top, and then on the bottom we have meters per second squared for acceleration. So, we're left with seconds. So, it takes 8 seconds for this car to go from its original velocity to full stop under these conditions. All right, so always try to use the fundamentals. It's going to be very good practice for you, and you can always apply them regardless of the situation, as opposed to having to try to memorize um, formulas for every single different situation that you might have.